Hey everybody, what's good? It was announced that Kendrick Lamar was going to be performing at Super Bowl 58. And I know that there's a lot of people around America thinking, Kendrick Lamar, who's that? So we're going to be taking a look at Poetic Justice by Kendrick Lamar featuring Drake. And I know that you've heard that Kendrick Lamar and Drake had a beef. Kendrick killed Drake's career, but because Drake is talented and has a bunch of music behind him, I'm pretty sure he's going to be fine. So we're going to take a look at this Poetic Justice, but before we do, go ahead and go over to coconutjustice.com and get yourself some nice t-shirts like this. There's a bunch of clothes up there that I think would look good on you. So go check it out. Coconut Justice. Poetic Justice featuring Drake. Oh, and the hook. You're going to notice the hook, which are the, uh, the sample, which is by um, uh, Janet Jackson. Love me some Janet Jackson. But not just any old Janet Jackson. I mean, generally love Janet Jackson, but... My favorite Janet Jackson is Pleasure Principal Janet Jackson, you know, with the chair, whoop, like that, with them jeans, with them jeans. Shout out Janet Jackson. One of the things before you really gets into it, Crenshaw, oh, uh, if you didn't know, Kendrick Lamar is from Compton which there's something in the water because Compton just makes incredible musicians. Um, but you'll see Kendrick Lamar, a lot of his music videos are very filmic, very theatrical, which is another reason why I love him. Every second, every minute, man, I swear uh -oh. that you can get it. Say a few bad bitch, put hey. your hands up high. Come on. Hands up high. Hands up high. Tell them to the lights down right now. Put me in the mood. I'm talking about dark moon. It's about to go down. Go, go. There she is. You ain't never gotta say shit. And I know you taste this a little bit. But no, for real. <laughs> Pleasure principle, where she's dancing in that warehouse. Poetic justice, poetic justice. If I told you that a flower bloomed in the dark room, would you trust it? I mean, I write poems in these songs, dedicated to you when you're in the mood for empathy. It's blood in my pen. Better yet, with your friends and them. I really wanna know you all. Okay, so, so far we have a rapper making a love song to his woman saying wonderful things that he wants to show her off and all this stuff. You see, do you see what I'm telling you? Like hip hop music isn't always about shooting and bitches and hoes and stuff like that. This is what I'm talking about. You know, some of us are trying to be grown out here. <laughs> like... We don't have time to go to jail. We got bills and shit. You curse this name. You called up your girlfriends and your girl in that little bitty range. I heard that she wanna go and party. She wanna go and party. Nigga don't approach her with that Atari. Nigga that ain't good game home is sorry. They say conversation. Rule a nation. I can tell. But I could never write my wrongs. Lest I write it down for real. P.S. I love that part. You can get it. You can get it. Any place. Hey, for real. <laughs> when I'm golfing, this is what I listen to. This kind of stuff. I really hope you play this, cause oh girl, you test my patience. Great. Okay. <laughs> Before we let Drake go in, uh, Drake is talented. Drake, they, they, he makes a certain kind of hip hop music, and it it makes sense sometimes, sometimes. But yeah, they had that. Uh, oh, to explain the beef real quick. So what happened was, Drake was making music, 
and touring with another hip hop guy or a hip hop artist rapper by the name of J. Cole. And then Drake and J. Cole came out with the song called First Person Shooter. In that song, I believe it was J. Cole that was talking about the big three. So the big three of hip hop were Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick. And again, J. Cole and uh, Drake were hanging out. They were touring. They were making music together. They are all buddy-buddy. And then there was a line in First Person Shooter that said, it's the big three. The big three being Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar didn't take that to didn't take to that too kindly, and he came out with the song that said, "It ain't the big three, it's big me." Because according to the rules of hip hop, if you want to be an MC, if you want to be a rapper, same thing. But if you want to be a rapper and you're gonna call yourself the very best, there's a sport to the rap game or to the hip hop game where if you're gonna claim to be the best. You have to beat the best. It's just that simple. Or just shut the hell up and get back in your corner. J. Cole, so after Kendrick dropped his track saying it's Big Me, J. Cole came out with a diss track. (laughs) Everyone that J. Cole hangs out with, they're like, you don't want this because Kendrick is, he goes, he goes for the jugular. Like he, he leaves a statement and that's it. Well, then Drake stepped up and released the track to which then Kendrick had to come back and respond to. And then this is how the duel went going back and forth. And it went about three rounds. And then <laughs> and then there's a diss track that, um, that Kendrick Lamar released that was such a well-produced song. And the contents of it were just wonderful. Everything was really really just good about this song that people started playing it in the clubs and now everyone is dancing to lyrics that are just they are demolishing who drake is as a person kendrick just went so absolutely personal and now kendrick is going to uh, perform at the super bowl which the so this is another part of the drama that's happening in this situation. Um, you probably, if you haven't heard, but you probably know that there's a rapper by the name of Lil Wayne. He makes a lot of music that a lot of people have heard. Lil Wayne is from New Orleans, and the Super Bowl is being played in New Orleans, and so that's why you would assume that. Lil Wayne would be the one per, uh, performing, but instead uh, they got the deal with Kendrick. Uh, I'm excited. I, I would have been excited either way. The Super Bowl would have won either way because I know Lil Wayne. I know he puts on a, a damn good show, uh, but I'm excited that Kendrick got the nod this time, and, uh, and uh, we'll see. It's going to be cool. Let's get back to it. Notice what you want. Poetic justice. I really hope you play this Cause oh girl you test my patience With all these seductive photographs And all these one on vacations Uh, I'm sorry Drake I have to cut you off again And I think it's kind of unfortunate For the hip hop scene Or for the rap scene For these beefs to, to happen Because it gets in the way Of great collaborations But at the same time steel sharpened steel if these guys didn't push each other the way that they did we wouldn't have these songs that are very important to the culture or to the history of the culture I really hope you play this Cause oh girl you test my patience With all these seductive photographs And all these one off vacations You've been taking Clearly a lot for me to take in It don't make sense Young East African girl You too busy for okay, so <laughs> I was trying to push you on You wanna plane Take you and your mama to the motherland I can do it Baby Patience with all these seductive photographs And all these oh, one off vacations Dr- uh, okay. You've been taking I thought Drake was calling another girl while he had the girl in the bed. And I was like, damn, uh, that's kind of what 
Kendrick was talking about during the diss tracks and stuff. But no, he was actually calling Kendrick and okay, cool. <laughs> Call. I really hope you play this Cause oh girl you test my patience With all these seductive photographs And all these one off vacations You've been taking Clearly a lot for me to take in It don't make sense Young East African girl You too busy fucking with your other man I was trying to put you on game Put you on a plane Take you and your mama to the motherland I can do it Maybe one day When you figure out you're gonna need someone When you figure out it's all right here in the city And you don't run from where we come from That sound like poetic justice Poetic justice you were so new to this life, but goddamn, you gotta just it. I mean, I write poems in these songs dedicated to the fun sex. Your natural hair and your soft skin and your big ass and that sundress. Ooh. Good God, what you I... doing that walk for? When I see that they move, I just wish we would fight less and we would talk more. They say communication, save relations, I can tell. But I can never write my wrongs so unless I write them down mail. for real. P.S. Every time I write these words, they become a taboo. Making sure my punctuation curve, heavy letter hits true. Living my life in the margin, and that metaphor was proof. I'm talking poetic justice, poetic justice. If I told you that a flower. So I know earlier I was talking about this song not having uh, them talking about um, bitches and hoes and cars and guns and stuff like that. What Kendrick is showing here is their reality. Um, this, this stuff, this drive-by. Every time I write these words, they become a taboo. Making sure. So you see, like this is part of their reality, where you know, uh, there's drive-bys and just it, it, anything can happen at any time. Uh, and this is just the reality. So the, he's not necessarily sitting, I guess money, hose and cars can be someone's reality, but, um, but this is, this is normal people trying to get by, get caught in this situation way too often. And it's, this is the reality that happens to you. Um, instead of you making your reality, you know, there's a difference. And for me, you sharing stories about things that are happening to you and you're informing us what's happening and using rap as the art form that's telling your story. That's, this is why I absolutely am passionate about this kind of hip hop, this kind of storytelling, this type of music video production, this type of film making, you know? I think there's a huge difference between just ratchet music and this. And it's unfortunate because this kind of rap is such an art form. And it's that ratchet stuff about the booty shaking and all that stuff um, kind of detracts a lot of people from this art form um, and they're not able to learn more about our stories and our realities because it keeps getting clouded by these booty shaking videos that that don't make sense to a lot of us um i mean i understand booty shaking there's there's a time and a place for booty shaking but yeah let's get back to it punctuation curve heavy letter his truth living my life in the margin and that metaphor was proof i'm talking poetic justice Poetic justice. If I told you that a flower bloomed in a dark room, would you trust it? I mean, you need to hear this. Love is not just a verb, it's you looking in the mirror. 
Love is not just a verse you looking for it maybe call me crazy we can both be insane. you see what he said there it's it's simple simple little lines like that that he drops in there he said he he, he said that love isn't just what you're getting it's also like looking in the mirror um and and accepting what you have and understanding that if you're not happy you have the power within yourself to to make it happen to make your life be what you want it to be just a simple little line like that I'm talking poetic justice poetic justice if i told you that a flower bloomed in a dark room would you trust it i mean you need to hear this love is not just a verb it's you looking in the mirror love is, love is not just a verb it's you looking in the mirror you see what i'm saying and all that booty shaking shit is what's keeping people from learning this remember like he comes from he comes from a city where they make rap songs about like the scary rap songs about the ones that you guys are afraid of <laughs> and he's still like he's prolific being a poet he's a prolific song writer this is wonderful to see like in an earlier line that he said uh if i told you that a flower would bloom in a dark room that's i mean think about it uh, Compton could very easily be a dark room and there's there's just incredible art that comes out of there so I would I would say yeah kind of kind of a, a, a flower can bloom in a dark room and all of these rappers are proof of it just a verse you looking for maybe call me crazy we can both be insane a fatal attraction is common and what we have common is pain I mean you need to hear this love is not just a verb and I can see power steering Sex drive when you swerve, I want that interference. It's coherent, I can hear it. Mm -hmm. That's your heartbeat. It either caught me or it caught me. Mm -hmm. Be slow and you'll find gold mines in these lines. Sincerely, you're truly. And right before you go blind, P.S. You can get it, you can get it, you can get it, you can get it. And I know just, know just, know, know just, know just what you want. Yep, so that was Poetic Justice by Kendrick Lamar. I am very excited to watch him in the Super Bowl this year. Well, I'm very excited to watch him and the Chicago Bears this year. It's going to be it's going to be great. Watch Caleb Williams and uh perform in the Super Bowl alongside uh Kendrick Lamar. That'd be great. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you want to come hang out while I watch videos and uh work on kids books and animations and stuff like that, hit that subscribe button and then hit the little bell right next to it so anytime I come out with a video, you'll be alerted. Don't forget to go to coconutjustice.com and get yourself some gear. Uh this is the life of a platano. If you know, you know tasty tasty and with that i'm out